if you find the content relevant then do like share and subscribe to the channel also hit the bell button to get a regular notification also do share your experiences and any suggestion that you have in the comment box hope you enjoy So we are looking at how many mocks you need to write in the remaining number of days. So basically before I talk about number of mocks, let me just classify into two types of mocks we are talk about. One is where you need to give mocks with time limit. Second where you need to give mocks without time limit. So let me explain the two and what is the motive between them. So when you talk of mocks with time limit, you need to focus on strategy. I mean try to improve your strategy because that's what mocks are mainly for. To ensure that your strategy is in place. So, what will you do when there is a time crunch? Which questions will you solve first? How many rounds will you solve each question? So, focus on strategy, build on a strategy, experiment on a strategy, because that is what will help you to improve with regards to the mocks. Right? Experiment and focus on the strategy as far as the mocks are concerned. When you write with time limit, right? After the mock, analyze the strategy: what has worked, what has not worked, and try to find better methods to whatever solve sums are there in the mock. That's a focus with regards to mocks with time limit. So when I talk of mocks without time limit, it is I can pick up whichever section I want for practice. So I can only do content DLI, I can skip verbal. So that means I can be selective in terms of what I want to practice. I can focus more time on the areas I'm weak at so I can improve on that. Okay. To focus out here when you're writing time mock without time limit, is to try to solve with better methods. Because when you solve a mock with time limit, we are habituated to do what we are usually used to do. So the better method never come to our mind. We never get into a habit of trying to solve the better method. Because in the time limit, we tend to try to solve things which we normally do. Put the equations, school methods, and that will not help us to improve. Therefore, in this, without time limit, your focus has to be to solve using a better method. Take every sum and try to see if you can solve with a better method. This will help, help you to create a habit and comfort with new methods. Because otherwise, without time limit, you'll go back to your old methods. You may do better methods after the mock, but at the first glance, when you see a question, you already solved without a better method, and therefore the habit is not created. So here, you force yourself to create a habit and then try to apply in a mock. So try to get. Suppose you learn a new method. So this practice without time limit will help you to get new methods as far as possible. Now coming to number of mocks, I would say eighteen mocks in the next twenty-four days. Approximately, right? So how do I break it up? So students who are really scoring very high, 99.9 plus, and their methods are in place. They don't have to improve anything. I mean, their methods should be in place. So in that case, you have to write all 18 mocks. You can write, you know, uh, with time limit. So time mocks. Okay, analyze it after the exam, and you can do on that. For students scoring less than that, say I say 90 to 99 as a percentile, I recommend 12 time mocks and six non-time mocks. Okay, for people who are in between 99.9 and 19, can do it anything between 18 and 12 time mocks. So vary it accordingly. Normally, a person scoring high will tend to write more time mocks. A person scoring low will tend to sell less time mocks, more non-time mocks because he requires more time to practice and more ways to practice. So I'm normally who not solving to solving more mocks without time limit because that helps you to improve your scores. That helps you to gain better methods. So as in when you score lower percentile, my recommendation is to solve more number of non-time mocks because that is what is going to help you in terms of practice and improving your methods and hence improving the scores. The minimum a person should solve is six time mocks. Solve twelve non-time mocks, which is the practice questions, but try to solve six time mocks at least in the rem remaining days. That is what is recommended. So overall, if I say how many time mocks, minimum six to maximum eighteen, depending on what percentile you score. You can vary it accordingly. Also, in the last week, don't write too many mocks. One to three time mocks is more than sufficient, depending on where you stand, because you don't want to saturate yourself in the last week and get tired as such. So try to follow this as far as possible, and if you can follow this, I'm sure it'll help you to improve. Remember the two aim of mocks: one is to build strategy where you write time mocks, and one is for practice where non-time mocks will be of more. Uh, it will be help you better in a time box i hope that helps thank you